getting access to someone's Facebook profile is an equivalent of getting a very in-depth and long psychological interview supported by few psychological tools to understand uh, this person better. And as I mentioned before, we used here Facebook likes, but I do believe, and we have findings that prove that, uh, both uh, at the university and at Microsoft, where we analyze different kinds of digital footprints and Facebook likes, that higher accuracy, significantly higher accuracy, and much wider range of different traits can be predicted uh, using different uh, kinds of data. And then I will take you quickly through applications in marketing, and I really count on you guys kind of asking some questions and also being creative. So again, I'm on the academic side, side of, of things. I know how to build tools for you, but you guys are experts, and I'm sure you have plenty of ideas how to use this new tool, this new ability to profile accurately on the individual level in your everyday work. So first of all, you can create a detailed profile of each and every consumer. And not only in the online environment. Again, you can do the same in offline. You can do the same with people who come to your store. Also, when it comes to predictions that you can base on it, uh, you can leverage your predictions using the data of all the other people who use the prediction engine. Right? So if you're Amazon and you sell, I don't know actually how much Amazon sells, say, but they, they, they sell a lot. Right? Many other companies do not have benefit of observing so much of their consumer behavior. If you're a smaller online bookstore, you simply don't have enough data to create an accurate model that will allow you to predict what a person who bought a given book will also want to buy. Especially if you want to go beyond the books, right? You are a bookstore, but let's say you want to put some adverts directing people to, uh, to a movie shop or movie rental company, right? This will be tremendously difficult for you, but if you can use a prediction engine of this kind that aggregates data from many different outlets, immediately those predictions become possible. Uh, also, of course, what you can do on the individual level, you can do on the group level as well. And I'll give you, a, I'll give you an example actually from my conversation with a brand manager who said, okay, I don't have any data about the individuals, but I'm interested in creating psychological profile of my typical customer. And I said, no problem, just tell me, and this is something that a typical brand manager will be able to tell me, what other products your customers are typically using. Tell me what, uh, what other brands they will put on, what books they read, what movies they watch, and so on. And I'm sure guys realize that someone who works with a certain brand for a long time would have a very good picture of a typical customer in their hands. So what we're doing here, we're really profiling the group. What you can do, you can take those objects, drop them at my prediction API, and I will give you a personality profile, not of an actual individual. I will give you a personality profile, full psychodemographic profile, really, of kind of a virtual, artificial person, the kind of a group profile in this case. But of course, also, when you started doing predictions on the individual level, you can very quickly aggregate the data. Right after a few days of doing that, you would probably have already hundreds of people in a database with their detailed profiles, and you can start observing what's, happen what's happening on the group level. Whether your customers are more extroverted or introverted, whether they are more liberal or conservative, whether they are more stressed, or maybe they are, cal maybe they are very calm and relaxed. And all this information is crucial in designing uh, how you speak to those guys and what you plan to sell them. And I will give you a few examples here of aggregate profiles. Uh, this is just personality again, but uh, there's a number of other psychological traits you can put people on. And you can see links of London and John Lewis. And you can see both customers are rather, both, both groups of customers are rather conservative, uh, with links of London being especially conservative. Those consumers uh, are really traditional. Uh, well organized and hard working, and here John Lewis, average customer there, is better organized and hard working, uh, but they're both on the positive side. And you can see the most drastic difference between those two brands is that John Lewis customers will be laid back and relaxed, whether uh, links of London uh, consumers are very, uh, oh, there's an error, sorry, they're not competitive or working alone. Uh, they are very stressed, easily stressed, and very emotional. And then this one piece of information, each of the psychological traits, each of the personality traits, has a tremendous importance in marketing because 
in, you would not only offer them different products, but you also communicate with them in a completely different way. I'll give you an example of an insurance company. We work with the insurance company, and they, uh, well, they were selling insurance to students, and they had a problem that you know plenty of people would like and fund their page on Facebook, but the conversion rates were really small. And actually, when they came to us, they say, "Hey, can you boost our conversion rates?" But we wanted to take it one step further and say, hey, we will not only boost your conversion rates, but we'll also try to bring you consumers that you want. Because if you're selling insurance, you just don't want to insure just about anyone. Just leave anyone to other insurance companies. You want to insure people who will never claim the insurance back. And those are, <laughs> those are the guys who are high on conscientiousness. They are not spontaneous. They are not easygoing and impulsive. They're well-organized, planning for the future, hardworking. Those guys will not only buy all possible insurance policies available, but they will also make sure that they never have to use them. <laughs> so this was one thing, and we actually increased, uh, kind of, they were very happy with the results, but we figured out that actually you can take it much further with a very simple thing. So we also figured out that neuroticism, how emotional you are, is really significant in receiving the messages and how you kind of receive the messages. If you are laid back and relaxed, and I'm telling you, hey, buy insurance, and you're like, whatever, like, nothing bad happens to me, I'm laid back and relaxed. So what I need to tell you, I tell you, hey, man, if you don't buy the insurance, you know, your car will crash, your house will burn, everything will go wrong, and I should also put a gory picture there with, uh, there with uh, some death or, or blood on the lawn or whatnot. I have to shake you. If I don't shake you, I wouldn't go through uh, kind of your cognitive filters. On the other hand, if you have easily stressed person, if you have someone who is very neurotic, you don't want to show them this message. Right? Because those guys, they'll freak out so easily, they'll just, they just want, don't want to listen to you anymore. What you want to do with them, you want to calm them down and say, hey man, like bioinsurance will take care of everything, everything will be all right, you know, you show them a picture of a nice house with a green lawn and everything is fine. And this is how you sell insurance to those guys. And again, by introducing it, we doubled uh, we doubled the conversion rate simply, well, they didn't change the picture, they just modified the message uh, below the picture on an advert. So by simply changing the language, you can double, not increase by 2%, you can double the clicks through ra uh, rate, and we were already filtering for consumers that are kind of most precious consumers, the consumers that will never, never claim the, uh, the insurance. Another example, example how you can kind of try to use this system to differentiate yourself from the competition and try to find kind of your, uh, your position on the market. You can see both, uh, uh, both sweet drinks, they have very similar personality profile. You can see people who like Pepsi, they don't usually like Coke and, and the other way around, but you can see that the profile is very similar. What's striking is that the difference occurs on the intelligence factor. <laughs> I didn't ask you guys to raise your hands who, uh, who drinks Pepsi. Um, it's to some extent predictable, predictive about your uh, um, school attainments too. Uh, in any case, this information is very valuable for those two brands and any other brand that would like to show up on the market. So first of all, you see there are no really sweet drinks kind of here at this group because of course you can check all the other drinks who would aim, target people of high intellect. Might be that people of high intellect wouldn't really like Coca-Cola and Pepsi because they're probably pretty unhealthy and so on. But it also shows you, kind of gives you insight about kind of previous strategies that those brands used. And let's say Pepsi, if I would be a Pepsi brand manager looking at it, I would say, I probably should just try to now target some people using more intelligent messages. Because actually being on the extreme of any trade means that you're kind of reducing your potential target group, right? If, you're, if, your ta if, you're, if your consumers are kind of radical in some ways, it also means that the group is rather small. It's the definition of being radical, right? So Pepsi should probably try to, um, uh, to add some, uh, some advan more advanced messages to their, to their advertising. Uh, but there's another advantage to technology. So I mentioned that you can identify users one by one. But very often you would be in a context, in an environment, where you do not really have access to any information about the individual user. Which does not mean that you cannot assume, uh, you cannot figure out what 
his profile would be. What you can do, you can simply, when you look at the group level, when you look at Pepsi, for instance, you've noticed that people who like drink Pepsi are on average less intelligent than people who drink Coca-Cola. So then, if I would like to target people of lower intellect or higher intellect, I could simply try to put my message next to people who consume Coca-Cola or Pepsi, regarding which level of intelligence I want to get. And I created some examples for you here. Uh, if you want to target people who are extroverted and open to experience, which are two different psychological traits, so actually we're going already into kind of some kind of uh, uh, more advanced targeting, you would target those keywords. Right? Some of those, like performing arts, your uh, company psychologist would tell you. People who are outgoing and liberal, uh, they probably would like performing arts. But using our approach, in which you automatically assess personality of thousands or millions of people, you can generate thousands of keywords like that, again, in a fraction of the second. Well-organized and competitive. Glock. I, uh, it's, a, it's a gun... Uh, uh, gun brand, I assume, <laughs> and MasterCard. Cooperative and happy. Jesus Daily and Bible. Uh, you can actually see most of those are kind of related to religion. People who are religious tend to be uh, very happy, and they're usually also high on uh, being cooperative. And high IQ individuals. I hope you, of course, recognize all of those keywords. Uh, you probably like them on Facebook already. And then the next step that you can take is to build your own predictive model. So now we do not really think about our consumers, especially about our individual consumers, in terms of what to do with their personality or with their happiness or with their motivation and so on, because simply we know so little about it. We have no ways of measuring it. And now in the digital environment, it became possible. It became possible that each of your consumers will be treated like a second-hand car salesman would have treated them with a, uh, with a highly personalized approach. And then I cannot tell you which personality profile will buy any given product from Argos. You can make some assumptions. You can say, okay, well-organized people will buy those kind of products. Spontaneous people that like art would buy something related to uh, being spontaneous and, and liberal and liking art, right? But what you can also do by simply recording this data and trying to figure out if there are any other patterns, you can then build those beautiful graphs that you were showing us about days of the week and now try to figure out, hey, what different profiles would go for and try to kind of build reasoning um, on top of it and maybe kind of try to tailor your offer even more accurately. <laughs>